What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender architectural modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about different ways to add furnishings to your scenes. So we're gonna talk about how to add cabinets and furniture and other things like that. Remember, if you wanna download the floor plan model that we're using and follow along, you can do that at the CGEssentials.com slash floor plan. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when you've got a model like this one and you wanna start adding things like cabinets or tables and chairs or other things like that, you need to think about how much time you wanna spend on doing this, right? So as a general rule, like I really don't recommend you going in and modeling all of this stuff manually unless you absolutely have to. Um, so as a general rule, what I recommend instead is I recommend you finding places to download these models as pre-made models. But like let's say for example that we wanted to add cabinets in our kitchen. So what we could do is we could do a shift right click in order to set our origin right here and then we could just do a shift A and we could add a cube. And then we could place our cube in our model and use that as a baseline for our cabinets. So what we could do is we could, and I'm gonna make sure I have snapping on, but we could move this so that it aligns with the floor. Then you could tab in edit mode. You could tap the G key and move your mouse like this in order to align this with where your cabinets would be. And then let's say we wanted to add cabinet doors in here. What we could do is we could just do a shift A then we could just add maybe another cube or we could also add just a plane as well do like an R, Z, or in this case, R, X, 90. We could tab in edit mode, tap two to go into edge select mode and move this up, tap three to go into face select mode and extrude this out like this. And then we could also inset the face in by tapping the I key, inset it again by tapping the I key again, and then I'm just gonna do an alt click and then we'll just extrude this in. So that would give us a cabinet door. And then we could use the array function in order to create copies of our cabinet door, just like this. So if I tap the Z key and I look at my, we'll go to wireframe mode, you can see the different cabinets on there right here. So definitely a valid way to do things. So probably what I would do with this case is I would add a countertop and I would just join all of these together just like this, right? So that's one way to do that, but you can see how it's really clunky. Usually I don't recommend doing this because there's so many models available out there that are gonna be to a higher level of detail than what you can quickly create. And you can get better results just by going and downloading a model instead of modeling it out yourself. And so there's a number of tools that you can use in order to make this easier. So the first tool is built in to Blender. So it's called Archimesh. And so what you can do is you can go to Edit, Preferences, and you want to enable Archimesh. Notice how there's an option in here for Archimesh as well as Archipack. And we'll look at both of these, so I'm gonna make sure they're both enabled. And so what Archimesh is going to do is if you tap the N key and look over on the right hand side, under the create option, notice how Archimesh has tools built in for creating things like doors and windows and other things like that. Well, in this case, what we could do is we could just click on the button for cabinets right here. Well, notice what this does is this builds out a cabinet for you. And on the left-hand side, it gives you a bunch of different options that you can use in order to adjust the cabinet that you've created. So you can set this to give you multiple cabinets. I think there's some different door styles in here. So this is great if you need to knock something out that's kind of quick. So there aren't a lot of built-in like fancy kitchen cabinet options or things like that. Um, these are probably to me maybe a little more like an office cabinet feeling, but having that tool built in and allowing you to customize all of this stuff is going to be great um, if you just need to add something quickly. So there's also a custom build of Blender out there called PyClone. What PyClone is is basically a, a version of Blender that supports Python. And what it does is this particular build, which I will link to in the notes down below, you can download it and you can run it and then you can bring in your cab cabinets from a library that they have inside of the program. So you can see I can bring this in, then I can click in order to place different cabinets. And if we jump into material preview mode real quick, um, you can see how there's different cabinet doors that you can look at. 
So you can adjust this with like shaker doors. You can adjust the uh, you can adjust the fronts. You can adjust the hardware. So if I was to select these in here. So you can adjust the hardware as well. And you can see how these cabinets look really good. So the only downside using Pyclone, um, because these are gonna be customizable and all of that, um, you can definitely come in here and adjust. You can adjust things like the widths and the heights. So the nice so the nice thing about Blender with Pyclone is it's very customizable and adding those things um, can be really quick. The downside to that is you would have to open that inside of your Pyclone version. So um, you could definitely do that. You just open the file over here and add your cabinets that way. Um, but you would be jumping around versions of Blender at that point. So that's definitely a viable option. I think that's gonna be a big deal in the future. Um, that one's still in development, but it's a great tool. And so there's also a lot of places where you can download things like furniture and cabinets. So for example, built into Blender, you've got access to Blender Kit, right? So Blender Kit is built in. And what that does is that allows you to access the Blender Kit online library. You do have to create a, uh, you do have to create a login in order to use that, but that allows you to go in and search a model library for something like, let's say Sofa, for example. What that's gonna do is that's gonna go search online for that. Notice how there are free and there are paid versions of furniture in here. So the ones with a lock on them are a part of the paid version. You can check that version out at the cgessentials.com slash blender kit if you want more info on the paid models. So you can get access to all of these paid assets or you can just bring the free ones in. And so if you bring the free ones in, what, so what's gonna happen with that is you can use that in order to bring these assets in to your model. So we're just gonna select this, move it down so that it's aligned with our floor. But you can use this to really quickly add things like furniture with no problems whatsoever. Um, another option would be Sketchfab. So we've talked about Sketchfab in the, fa in the past. So Sketchfab has a massive library of models that you can download. So um, they're, they're kind of all over the place because a lot of them are user generated, but let's say we wanted to download something like chairs, for example. So if we were to search for chair, you can see how there's a ton of different options inside of Sketchfab's library that you can use. So you can also search for those inside of Blender. So once you log in, for example, um, if we were to search for table and chairs, notice how there's a ton of different options in here that you can download. So for example, so for example, we could bring in this simple dining table and chairs really easily. Note that you do need to pay attention to the kind of license that's available on the model. So for example, this one is a CC attribution non-commercial, meaning you have to give attribution as to where it came from and you can't use it for commercial use. Um, there are a bunch that are just attribution only that you can use for commercial use, but all you would do in this situation is you would just click on the button to import the model and it's just gonna take a little time to bring that in, but it's just gonna bring it in and drop it into your Blender model, and then you can place it in this location. One thing to note about SketchUp, SketchFab models is for some reason, and I'm just gonna do a select hierarchy, I'm gonna scale these down. For some reason, these come in at like a really weird, very high scale. So that is something that you need to be aware of. I'm not sure if that is due to the units that I have set or what, but you do end up having to scale these down. Um, it's not a giant deal, but it is just something to be aware of when working inside of Blender is that you are gonna have to do that. But overall, and I'm gonna hide my Blender kit right here, but overall, this is a great way to really quickly add furniture to your models. So another option for furniture is you can also use the SketchUp 3D warehouse. So SketchUp has a massive warehouse of models that you can download. Um, so this is the free online version of SketchUp. So you could come in and find models inside of the 3D warehouse by clicking on the 3D warehouse button right here and searching for things. So the nice thing about the SketchUp 3D warehouse is a lot of manufacturers host their models in here. So for example, if you do like a product search and let's say we wanted to download. So like for example, CraftMade hosts their entire collection of cabinet models on the 3D warehouse. 
So if I was to come in here and click on see more details and click on craft made, they have entire collections of different cabinet lines. Um, so these are like real world cabinets that you can download. And so what you can do is you can take cabinets like these and you can download them into the free version of SketchUp. And then you can come over here. So I think in the free version, there's a Collada export. Or the other thing you could do with this one is you could just download this. So if you click on download, there's an option to download this as an SKP file. And usually I download those in 2017. But if I download this model right here, you can use the SketchUp importer plugin in order to bring this in. So I will link to the SketchUp importer down below. But SketchUp importer is a free importer that's gonna allow you to import SketchUp files. So it does exactly what it sounds like. When you have that enabled, you can just do a file, import, and you're gonna have an option in here for import SketchUp scene. And so we can just take this and we can just click on the import SKP to bring that in. And then I'm just gonna find all the objects that this, got, this brought in. And I'm gonna do a control J to join them into a single object. But notice how what that's going to do is that's going to bring in this cabinet. It's pre-built and looks really good. And I'm not 100% clear on the licensing agreements for this for SketchUp. Um, it's a little, it's a little kind of weird because a lot of these manufacturers, this is where they host their 3D files. So I'm not really sure what to do if you want those manufacturer files other than bring them through SketchUp and then bring them into Blender. Um, you'd have to read the actual license agreement of the 3D warehouse to figure out what exactly the usage is for there. Um, for most applications, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal, but it is something to be aware of. So the SketchUp 3D warehouse is another option for bringing things like this in. So there's also going to be websites like TurboSquid or CG Trader, which are going to have both free and paid models that you can download. So you can sort these by .blend files. If you just want Blender files, you can bring those in as well. So if you're looking for something in particular and you can't find it somewhere else, you might try one of these paid sites too. So leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. I'll link to some videos about PyClone and some other helpful stuff on this page. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.